Alright, on today's episode, we're going to find out if sub-positioning and the orientation makes a huge difference or not. Some people say, my sub sounds better when it's facing into the car. Some people say it sounds better when it's facing the rear of the car. And we're going to go over all the orientations of which way sounds the best on the meter. What we're going to do is we're going to take out these two kicker L7 S's. This is the daily build, grocery getter if you will, to uh, CXA 1800s. Uh, game matched it does a 46.3 at the kick uh, 43 at the headrest sealed up 50 hertz you know no wasted information here um, <laughs> it's a little truck box but what we're gonna do today is since this isn't very ideal to flip around and spin and all that kind of stuff we're gonna throw a Walmart kicker, a uh, 10 inch comp uh, and see how she does Let's go unhook the truck system. Now this is just a sealed enclosure again. So in port positioning is a whole nother ball field. Because then you can have a port on the side, you can have a port on this side, you can have a port on the top, you can have a port on the back, you can have a port on the front. And then those orientations all have multiples of themselves. So you could literally sit here and do a video of, you know, 16 different enclosures and then position it four different ways for each one. Well, maybe more, I don't know, just a guess. But with the sealed enclosure, we're gonna get the most accurate results because there's less variables involved. we're going to try to do is find the peak of each orientation and see which way yields the most score. I'm going to go run inside and get my SPL lab clamp meter and we're going to hook this up and we're going to start testing. I just wanted to go over a few things here uh, where the meter is placed and all that kind of fun stuff. So we have the laptop here, uh, we got the meter here at the uh, window and what I'm doing is I'm putting it in the middle uh, so we get an accurate result rather than one side or the other. Uh, the windows are sealed, doors are sealed uh, to try to get a more accurate result rather than okay if the subs on this side is it going to be louder because of the wavelength and there's there's more to this eventually as well. And uh, don't mind the rat nest back there but that is the uh, clamp hooked up and uh, there's the laptop and we're going to get going here. What we're going to do is just try to find the peak. Um, now, given the amount of power you put to a driver, um, you get Keaton's curve and all that kind of fancy stuff you don't need to know about, um, the peak will change. Uh, sometimes it'll peak uh, lower than it really should, or it'll peak higher than it really should, and then when you put power to it, it just either runs into mechanical limit or, or some other factor. We're going to try. Uh, a shorter sweep, a little more power, but I, I had a feeling it's going to be in the higher range here. All right, we got a good reading there. Clamping 155, uh, 59 hertz. I'm going to try to dial that in, but that sounds about right for the uh, sealed box we got back there. Main thing looking at is the power there. We're going to crank it up a little bit here. And you can see there, that little 10 inch kicker just took 524 watts. <laughs> uh, not doing too bad, our peak's around the same, 55 hertz. Uh, and you can see we're still clamping around the same. We're doing 63 volts by uh, pulling eight amps. So around six to seven ohms or something like that. So that, that, that's pretty good, but that's why we're run, that's why we're pulling some good power here. This, this amp has plenty enough to play this little 10 here. And that 10's rated for 150 RMS, so take it how you will, but uh, heck, of a, heck of a driver back there, to just even just to take that for a sweep. So next what we're gonna do is do that 55 hertz, because that was, that was pretty much full tilt, and I don't wanna go more than that anyway. So, uh, and that was, that was a volume 50 on the head unit, so we're, we're, we're probably clipping. But uh, when you're burping, you ain't clipping, you ain't loud. Without a sweep with a burp, we were uh, 
doing about 500 watts and did a 34.8 and that's on the dash like I showed earlier that's a pretty impressive score uh, even given the power and the cone area and all that kind of stuff and being sealed up so now that we have a base of 134.8 for the sub back let's try the next one in theory where a lot of people do where they think well if I have it firing towards me it's closer to me it's gonna be louder so let's see the difference here we go as you can see in the back we have the uh, 10 inch firing into the cab so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a mini sweep like how we did last time around that ball field see if it goes over the 34.8 um, and to see how much uh, now between runs I'm gonna try to keep it even so that the driver uh, gets a little bit of a cool down period per uh, run so we're not running into higher rise less power etc etc so we want to see around the same type of number of that 506 watts this is going to change maybe a little bit uh, but we're mainly looking at the power and the db and the frequency to see how much that changes so uh let's reset this i'm going to go a couple clicks down just to see the difference here Okay, so that's showing 59 hertz, a little higher peak, but like I said before, we have a lot less power. So what we're gonna do, run that has a little bit uh, short of a sweep, one, and two, more power. So we're gonna try the 54 hertz and then we're gonna try the 55 hertz. See if there's any difference. Okay, uh, let's see, we got 132.4, 380 watts. Now, another reason why the rise could be higher here um, is because there's less of a uh, loading wall, boundary loading. Now, what that means is pretty much the sound bouncing off of something hitting the speaker. So what's happening is there's uh, more or less resistance. Right now it's showing more, um, which is weird. But at the same time, it could just be, uh, like I said earlier, the sub getting warm. Uh, let me go take a look, make sure everything's okay, and go from there. Yeah, we're good. We got no rub. Probably just the coil getting warm. So what we can do is face it around again to get a more accurate result around the same power. Okay, what we're going to try to do is get 380 watts again at the 54 hertz, 55 hertz. It doesn't really matter, uh, not for what we're testing. So we're going to try to get that 380 watts again and see what the score is between the difference here. What we're going to focus on is that power, 380 watts. crazy where I couldn't even get 500 watts I literally just spun the sub around so it's it's literally making the sub I think since the sub has something to go against um, it's keeping the cone from going farther out and reaching its uh, mechanical limit which is also stopping the power from being to be able to be made because that was so easy to go over that 380 watts. I'll do it again. Here, we'll even do 54 hertz just to, you know, see the difference. It easily went over that. I, I had like two, almost three more clicks to fly over that 380. So what we're gonna do, flip it one more time, backfire and forward and see what happens. Cause I bet you any money, I'm not gonna be able to even get close to that. All right, we are back. Um, we're gonna try to get four or 500 watts out of this. All the way up. And I can't get over 300 watts. I literally cannot hit 400, 500 watts just for the simple fact that the sub is firing into the car. You would, you would think it'd be the opposite, but no. It literally needs something to push up against so that, that the wind and that the pressure keep the cone from going farther than it should on the back run of, of the back way or whatever you want to call it. 
I'm no physicist, I'm no, you know, super professional at this, but at the same time, it's science and it's so cool, let's learn more. Spin it around, we're gonna fire to the side and see what kind of numbers we can get then. Move the sub over to the left corner driver's side um, of the car so we can get some nice loading corner pressuring. Uh, so let's uh, do a sweep real fast. So let's reset this. Yeah, I'm learning some stuff today. I didn't think I was going to learn anything today other than, you know, orientation does matter. But no, I'm learning that orientation and power and all the other stuff is also involved as well. And, it, and it's crazy. All right, I think it's safe to say that we're at the 55 hertz and that's going to be the number for this car. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to do that 55 hertz, but we're going to burp it. Again, now that the sub it has something to load off of, we are able to produce more power. So let's try the other side and see if that makes any difference. So let's try that 55 hertz again and send it. Wow, so we got 572 at 133. So uh, we were able to clamp the most power out of these runs. 572 watts to that little uh, Walmart kicker, which is pretty crazy. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do sub up. So let's see how she does. That's really impressive because that's the most amount of power with a 133.5. I do believe that's, that's, that's one of the higher scores that we've received out of this. Let's see what else we can do. All right, now for this next test, what we're gonna do, um, we got the sub firing back, but this time we have it a lot closer. So we're gonna see if that makes a difference on the power level. Uh, what we're gonna do is see what kind of numbers we can get. Um, again, full power with it all the way to the rear. One last time. Uh, we're gonna try to see if we can overreach that number just by sliding the box back. That's crazy. Let me double check, 133.9, 523. Now we might have other factors that are coming in where the battery might be getting depleted. So the amp's not able to do the same amount of power, but I mean, to be honest, we're right around the same 507. With SPL and metering, every little thing matters. I could have had the sub a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. All right, we're gonna do one more test um, just to nullify if you have the sub firing in if that positioning makes a difference because we metered it earlier with it closer to us. Now let's see if we have it firing the back of us, like farther away, but closer to the end of the trunk, if that makes a difference. So let's switch that real fast. Got the subwoofer in position and see what we come up with here. Look at that, 133.2, but that definitely is an improvement of just having the sub in your car fired in that you can be decently loud if you have it all the way to the rear. It almost seems like in both situations, when it's closer to the rear of the car, it's louder rather than farther away, closer to us. All right, well, we learned a few things today. Um, orientation does matter. Um, now by how much, it depends the system. What I would suggest is, sub up or sub back. If you do sub forward, you're gonna have to have it all the way in the rear or you're not gonna be able to produce power in this situation, not all. So it all depends what you have, what you're running with. This was just to get an idea of, does it really matter which way my sub is facing, which way, what positioning is, where my sub is in my trunk, does it matter? Um, this is just an informational video for the new guys that don't have this fancy equipment to figure out how loud it is and how much power they're doing. To just give you a rough idea of what works the best. Stay tuned for the next video. Um, I'll try to keep videos every two weeks. So just busy lifestyle, trying to uh, do what I can here. And uh, I will see everyone next time. Thank you for watching. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe, please. Uh, your support means a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you.